All right, guys, so we're back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how we can actually uh, save users to a database or really saving any type of data to a database, okay? So we're going to be applying a lot of the knowledge that we've learned from the previous videos and then putting it into this video as well. So you might seem, it might seem like this video is very verbose, it's very, um, very detailed, and we're doing a lot of things, but that's only because I want to show you guys how we can apply all of the things that we've learned from previous videos and uh, putting it all together. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll set up a post request because obviously when it comes to creating records in the database or saving data, uh, that should always be done, or most of the time it should be done using a post request. You wouldn't use a get request for that. So we're going to go ahead and import the post decorator, which comes from Nest.js common. And we're going to go ahead and uh, label this route or this endpoint as create. So when we visit this endpoint, we're going to have to make a request to slash API slash users slash create. And also know, note that we are inside the user's uh, controller, okay, which is inside the user's module. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and create a method called uh, create user. And we're going to go ahead and create a data transfer uh, object. So similar to how we did that in one of our videos where we, where I showed you guys how to validate post requests. If you guys have not seen that video, I think it's episode four or five. Definitely go check it out. It literally goes in depth on how to actually properly validate your post requests. And we want to make sure we are always validating our post requests. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder inside the users folder or inside the users modules folder. And I'll call this DTO just to follow our name conventions. And I'll call this create user.dto.ts. So similar to how our DTO should look like, we're going to go ahead and create a class called create user DTO. And we're going to give our DTO. So remember the DTO, it's responsible for, uh, it's basically a schema of how our request payload is going to look like. So our request payload is going to have a username, a password, and an email address because we're going to follow the entity that we created from the previous video, okay? So in the previous video, we created an entity called user, and it has four fields all together. But the only fields that we're going to uh, have in our DTO is the username, email, and password, because that's what we're going to send uh, as a request uh, to, the, to the actual server. So we're going to go ahead and label, or not label, but we're going to have a field for username, and its type is going to be a string, password, and then email. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, use the class of validators to take care of validating our data. So for example, I want to make sure the username field is not empty. So we'll use the class validators is not empty decorator to validate that. We'll make sure that the username is also a min length of at least two characters. Or actually, I'll do three instead. For password, We'll make sure it's not empty as well. And then the min length will be at least 10 characters. And then for email, we'll make sure that it is not empty. And then um, min length, uh, well, actually we don't have to worry about min length. Uh, we wanna use the is email decorator to make sure that it's an actual email. And all these decorators come from the class validator package. Okay, so now if we make a post request, uh, we should ensure that all of these fields are being sent and it follows these validator rules. And if either one of these fails, it'll send back in error. So in order to get this uh, detail wired up with our, uh, with our post request, all we got to do is inside the create user, inside the uh, parameters, we're going to use the at body decorator. And that also comes from the uh, Nest.js comment package. And we're going to go ahead and name the variable we'll call this create user DTO. And we'll type annotate this to be the create user DTO. Okay. So now watch this. If I go ahead and inside Postman, uh, let me just switch this from a get to a post request. And we're going to go into uh, the body tab. And I'm going to go ahead and select the form URL encoded. Uh, so if I go ahead and select the username, and if I just don't enter anything, uh, let's see what's going on over here. Oh, I found one more thing. We need to invoke uh, the uh, validation pipe. So we need to actually use the use pipes hook and then we need to pass in the validation pipe. And like I said, watch the video on validating post requests. I go in depth on that, but in case you guys are eager to know what's going on here, 
Uh, in order for the validation to occur, you need to make sure you use the use pipes hook, okay? Or not hook, but the use pipes decorator. And you, you need to pass in uh, the validation pipe class. Okay, so this will actually ensure that it'll validate the, uh, the the post request. Okay, and these things come from the Nest.js comment as well. Okay, so now if I make another post request, it's going to give us all these error messages. Okay, and you can see that if you look at each error message, it corresponds to the rules that we have specified for each field. Okay, so for example, if I get if I uh, provide an empty username, it's saying username should not be empty. If I provide a username with only one character, it's going to say username must be longer than three, or it must be three characters or more. But you can see that username uh, must username should not be empty. That error message disappears. So let's do Anson. Let's just specify the password. If I provide an invalid email, it's just going to give me that invalid email error. So I'll just do Anson at gmail.com. And there you go. Okay, so now that we have the validation taken care of, let's actually save the user to the database. So when it comes to uh, saving stuff to the database, that stuff really should be handled in the service layer. At least in Nest.js, that's what they recommend. If you come from a Spring Boot background, you're used to doing things in, you're used to saving stuff in the database in the DAO layer or the repository layer. Now you can actually create custom repositories. We're not going to do that in this video. We're just going to save everything in the user's service. So what I'll do is I'm not going to delete anything. I actually did delete the uh, the mock users. But what I'll do instead is I'm just going to create a new function or a new method called create user. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, it's going to, this this method is going to take in a it, it's going to take in the DTO uh, object because the user that we're saving to database all of those fields are going to match the DTO. There's all there's there's a, there's overlap. So I'll just call this a create user DTO. Okay. And I'll type annotate this as a create user DTO. Okay. Now in order to actually save the user to the database, we need to actually inject the repository. So in type orm, there's something called a repository, which is what we are going to use to interact with the database. If you have used um, Mongoose before for MongoDB or if you've used they have similar... Uh, features where you have the actual entity or the document and you can call certain methods such as find one, delete one, create one, etc, etc. And that will actually allow you to create the user and then you can save it to the database. So in order to get the repository, we're going to first uh, implement our constructor inside the constructors, uh, uh, inside the uh, constructors parentheses for the arguments. We're going to go ahead and use the inject repository decorator and this comes from the nest.js type orm package and for the uh for the parentheses we're going to specify the actual entity so our entity is called user but you're going to notice that uh, when we import it from the type orm uh, folder it's going to give us an issue because we have a duplicate identifier and that's because we already have a type this is an interface that we created from a previous video uh, I'm just going to name this as user entity instead. So I don't want to, I don't want to delete anything. Okay. So now that we have injected the repository or not, not injected yet, but we still need to, uh, set this as a private variable and we'll set this as read only. Uh, so we'll give the name of user repository for this field. And we're going to type annotate this using the repository, uh, using this repository type or this class. Now this is actually a generic type. So we can actually pass in the actual entity. Okay. So the type of this repository is a user entity. So that means, uh, that means TypeScript will know every single time we uh, retrieve a record using this repository. It's we uh, TypeScript will know that's also going to be a user, a user entity. Okay. So now that we've done that, you're going to notice that we're going to get an error and that's saying that user repository, uh, if user repository is a provider, is it part of the current user module? So basically this happens is because uh, Nest cannot resolve those dependencies. And the reason why it's happening is because we actually did not import type ORM into our user's module. Because right now we're inside the user's module and we're trying to use a repository. But we didn't import the user module or we didn't import the type ORM module and we didn't also uh, provide the actual user entity. So we're going to go ahead inside the object. 
we're going to go ahead and specify the imports, which is an array. And then we're going to go ahead and reference the type or a module. So make sure you import that. It's right, up here, it's right over here. It comes from the NestJS type or uh, package. We're going to call the for feature method. And we're going to pass in the entity or entities. So this is going to be an array. And we're going to pass in the user entity, just like that. And that comes from the type or a folder right over here. Okay. And now if we go ahead and check the logs, you're going to see that the error goes away. So that's all we have to do for this specific error. And with any repository that you're going to use, you're going to run some error. So you need to make sure that you, uh, so for example, let's say in this, let's say for example, in this user's module, we might have another entity. And for that entity, we want to use its own repository. You're going to have to also add that entity inside here as well, if you want to use it. Otherwise, it's going to give you that error. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, save the user to the database. So this is a two-step process. So what we're going to do first is we're going to need to call the create method on the user repository uh, uh, field. And so we can actually pass in an object itself, or you can just pass in uh, an object from the from the parameter and just pass it in directly. But I just want to show you guys this real quick. So notice how inside the object, I can actually specify the ID if I wanted to, the username, the password, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now all of those fields overlap with the DTO. And uh, in or and and also one thing to note is that this method is only going to be called uh, after validation has uh, taken place. And if the validation fails, it's going to return a 400 status. If it succeeds, then it's going to call this method. So we can assume that all of these fields inside create user detail are going to be valid. Okay. Now, before I actually, let me actually rephrase that. It's safe to assume that these fields are valid fields that the server uh, can actually uh, interpret, but that does not mean that those fields are, are are going to be valid for the database. Because, for example, someone might uh, someone might actually uh, enter a username or an email address that is actually already um, taken. So you have to check that as well. Uh, when it comes to passwords, maybe you might have your own complicated password uh, algorithm. So you might want the user to have a more sophisticated password. So uh, I'm only just going to do a simple simple example for now, but you might want to do your own, um, you might want to do your own custom validation. You may want to you know check to see if the user actually is in the database or not. Okay, but um, when you call this create method, it's going to return a user entity. And this method is synchronous, so you don't have to await the method call. And what we need to do next to actually save the user to the database. So this actually doesn't save it, it just creates the object. To save it, we're going to go ahead and call user repository.save and we're going to pass in the entity. Okay, and since we're not really going to do anything with the entity inside this method, we're just going to return it so we don't have to worry about adding the async keyword in front of create user and we don't have to await this okay so when we return this back to the controller so we have to call this uh, and we have the user service already injected so i'm going to go ahead and do uh, i'm just going to do return this the user service dot create user okay and so uh when we call this uh let's go ahead and just going to set my uh, entity real quick and you're going to see that when i actually call uh this this api this this endpoint so right now it should create the user for us okay so there you go it gives us the username email password and we don't have any unique constraints uh, on the username or the email so it's just going to create duplicate entries but obviously in your business logic you might want to check that so you can handle that um, inside the user service if you need to um, and that is pretty much it. So that's pretty much how you save records to the database. So pretty much you create an entity and then you, uh, inject the repository for that specific entity. And then you can just call the, uh, API methods such as create and save, and then that will save everything to the database for you. Okay. So that's going to be pretty much it for the tutorial. Uh, if you guys liked it, definitely leave a like down below. And if you have any suggestions, leave a comment. Um, and feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.